half speed. Tune in and get entertained and informed. 990 WBOB, the leader in free media. Inspire the inner graphic artist in you. Everyone can become a professional designer with PhotoJet's graphic design tool. Whenever you feel inspired, you can always create awesome designs with massive templates from posters, flyers, cards, and invitations. Create graphic designs, make collages, and edit photos. Check them out at PhotoJet.com today. Oh, yeah. With only a Anyone can create professional All right, guys, we're about to go live here in a few minutes. If you're watching on Facebook Live, go to 990wbob.com. Turn the audio down here. Listen to the audio there. I'm going to set it up. We're going to have a 30-second degree Freemason on the show. We're going to interview him. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting. I took a lot of your questions from social media, plus ones that I had. Uh, so this should be a fun show. And anybody that was interested about masonry or Freemasons in general, uh, tag them in this video and please share this video because this should be one of the more interesting shows that we've had. So uh, right after these uh, couple minutes of commercials right here, we're about to do something. Stay tuned. Share. Sure. Providing only factual evidence to his listeners instead of fear tactics for propaganda. Truth inspires his audience to think and demand the truth. Listen live Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern or listen on demand when you want. Demand the truth demands your attention and your intellect. The people with their support so they carry out what you want. This is 990WBOB.com. The home of Internet Entertainment from Rhode Island to the world. 990 WBOB.com. 990 WBOB.com is an independent free media company. Good evening and welcome to Debate the Truth. Designs to educate, expose justice, and inspire action. Here is your host. Mr. Will Hello, everybody. Welcome to another worldwide transmission of Demand the Truth here on Renegade Radio 990WBOB.com. And I want to thank everybody for watching on Facebook. Also, turn down the volume and go to 990WBOB.com. Listen to the live audio there. Uh, last week, we demanded the truth on Christianity. Now we're going to find out what's the truth about Freemasonry, I'm going to have in a minute or two, John Page, a Freemason, a 32nd degree Freemason on the show. And uh, he sent me photographs, three separate photographs with his membership uh, uh, photos, uh, cards actually, I should say. He's got membership cards there that do say his name and the 32nd degree, obviously. I mean, those could be fakes, but it seems like it's pretty true. He sent me his membership, his cards and all that. So we'll get into that. Um, but before that, I wanted to just introduce him a little bit and give my take on masonry and uh, just things in general. So, you know, once you get into this, there's people that say, oh, the Freemasons run everything, or oh, it's the Jews. No, it's, it's the Vatican's. No, it's the Bilderberg group. Uh, I mean, everybody wants to lay the blame on one particular group, but I have yet to see uh, one particular group that should take all the blame. So Masons have been in our past uh, very, very interesting. They've been integral in the role of our history. As a matter of fact, a little known fact, the first third party in United States history was the anti-Masonic party. Um, but Masons have been involved in not just the founding of this country, but all over Europe and the world. Um, and one thing I wanted to say before I bring our guest on here live, and he can call in um, as soon as he's ready, call into that phone number that I gave you. But uh, the thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that Freemasonry, uh, even George Washington in his writings, and it's in the congressional records, um, Freemasonry was developed a long time before the Illuminati. Now, there was an actual historical organization called the Bavarian Illuminati, which actually existed. You can look it up in encyclopedias. Um, it was created by the Rothschild family and also a Jesuit priest named Adam Weishaupt. And Adam Weishaupt, purposely sent his people to infiltrate Freemasonic lodges. And uh, George Washington, who himself is a Freemason, has an entire monument uh, in D.C. and also an entire uh, memorial for him in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, just being an entire Mason, 
wrote about the fact that the Illuminati had been infiltrating the Masonic lodges. And some people believe that they were infiltrated by the Illuminati, and some people believe that they're a righteous organization. So we're going to find out, and I believe we do have John Page on the line with us, who's a 32nd degree Freemason. John, are you there with us, brother? I am. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself, uh, let the people know a little bit about yourself, and then if you have any websites or links that you want to share so people get in contact with you, uh, feel free to do that as well. Um, I'm, uh, I guess you can get in contact with me through the Facebook, uh, Houston County Libertarians. Um, we're not very active there. I'm the editor, and sometimes I get bogged down in work and doing other things around the house and such. But I always re will respond. All right. So let's jump right into it today. Um, w for anybody that doesn't know, we're going to start from the very beginning. What is Masonry? What is Freemasonry in general? Um, according to the... And every state is different. There, there is... There, First of all, there is no central organized masonry at a national level at all whatsoever, period. In, in the Blue Lodge, which is the first three degrees of masonry. Um, so every state has, each one of them has their own separate way of doing things. And some states claim, some states don't do it right. Some states say the other ones don't. And it's according to where you're at as to what you're going to get. But um, in Alabama, where we do things correctly, um, um, my wife listening. Um, but uh, in Al in Alabama, um, you know, we all report to the Grand Lodge, Alabama. All right. So, but uh, the Grand Lodge of Alabama had to have started somewhere. Where does where does uh, what is Freemasonry? What what do you what do you? It's a fraternal organization, I understand. But I mean, what is the goal of Freemasonry? Why do you guys meet in the first place? Uh, we meet to discuss what's going on, what's going on in the community, what's going on with uh, each one of our brothers. Uh, we do like the prayer requests, and we we uh, look after the widows and the sons and the daughters and the orphans. Um, we're just a little small community outreach program, and then on a state level, we do a thing that's kind of creepy where we go around to schools and different field days and stuff and we ID kids. We record them uh, giving different answers and we do digital fingerprints and we make a, a copy of the disc and we give the disc to the parents and the parents can then use it to give to a police organization or whatnot to help find that child. Okay, so why do you think that's creepy? I mean, it does sound kind of creepy. Um, is, is that the only creepy part of masonry? Uh, I mean, does anybody object to that? That does sound kind of creepy, oh. fingerprinting kids. Uh, no, it, it, I mean, that's, no, there's lots of creepy stuff with masonry, especially when you get into the higher degrees. Oh, okay. But, uh, I mean, it, it, it's not really creepy. It, it's just, I mean, it's, it's good in act, all actuality. I mean, the only the only... The only information that is kept, uh, there, there's no information kept on our end. The only information that is kept is by the parents of the child. Okay, so let's start, uh, let's take it back. We'll jump back into some of the, uh, the deeper things of masonry afterwards. But where do you guys claim your origin? I know I've heard people say uh, Freemasonry began in Egypt. Other people speculate that it started with the Knights Templars, and there's even the Templar degree. And then I've heard people say even before to the to the big to the pre-flood civilizations that were hypothetically in existence what's your take on masonry when it began it began uh, during the building of the first temple in the bible every everything is a sin masonry can be traced back to the bible uh, there's a lot of stuff that's left out of the bible that masons claim to have passed down from mouth to ear from one generation to the next but masonry all started with geometry and they were, they worked in, um, oh, think what's it been, um, hold on, I, I can't remember the word right now. Is this, the, the speculative masons? Of, yeah, there's a speculative masons and the building masons. Yeah. 
yeah. Anyway, that, that's how it started with, with the builders. And they started noticing patterns in geometry, and they figured out that the two pillars up, and when you put a mortar joint over the top of them, you know, and, and they figured out how to shave stone to make them real nice and smooth, and, and everything's based off of the level, the square, and the plumb. And, you know, you're supposed to live your life on the level, leave on the square, and just different things like that. And we've, we've taken just normal everyday things and put different meanings behind them. And most of the time, Masons were the only ones that were educated and could read anything. And that's how a lot of people became smarter, you know, through, just through joining a stone mason guild. You learn how to read, you learn how to write, you make decent wages, and you got the benefits. That's very interesting. Nowadays, Continue, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go Nowadays, ahead. None of that. <laughs> How has it changed? What do you mean? Um, well, right now, masonry is fucking wind. There's, there's big decline. We, um, in, okay, in I'm glad you brought that up yeah. because that was one of the next questions, and that was a question given to me um, via social media. If you can talk about that for a second, and also uh, they, someone wanted me to ask you about the declining, of number, the declining number of Masons and, and what that is attributed to, if you wouldn't mind, to continue with what you're saying, but also answer that, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, what I contribute the decline of Masonry is the older generation doesn't want the new generation in, and hmm. they, were, they had gotten so strict and so tight on their guidelines of what they thought a good Mason should be that they wouldn't let anybody in, wouldn't let any new blood in, wouldn't, wouldn't let it pass down to another generation. And only here just recently, some lodges have gotten less strict and started opening up. Like, one of the, the, the mason that is in charge of the child ID program for the state with a big, huge budget has got thug life tattooed across the stomach. Oh, my goodness. I could not imagine that yeah. reality. Wow. <laughs> yeah. he, he will be the grand... Lodge. Uh, he will be a, uh, a Grand Lodge Mason one of these days. He will be in the line. Wow. I mean, that's, he's, that's he's interesting. He's a great Mason. I mean, he is a great brother. He's the one that got me involved with the Lodge. We grew up together. Um, he, the, the knowledge that this man has in his brain, and he's the one that taught me everything that I know. But the man that taught him was supposed to be the Grand Master of Alabama last year, but he died a couple of months before becoming Grandmaster, and they made him honorary Grandmaster and gave him... The, he, he was the number one um, Scottish Rite and number one York Rite Mason in the state, and if you were to see our lodge, you you would think that it was a dilapidated old building hmm. out in the middle of the country that nobody went to. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of ornaments in the lodge, there's not a lot of furniture in the lodge, very limited seating, there, the, there's a hump in the floor, so when you walk, you, you walk up a hill and then down a hill. Well, that's very interesting. We're yeah. talking here to John Page, who is a 32nd degree Freemason. Uh, we already dispelled a couple myths about the Freemasons, and uh, it's going to be interesting to talk more. I have got deeper questions here for him. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to have another segment, then a followed by another break. Then we have a very long segment coming up after that. But uh, the Masons have been accused of sun worship, devil worship, controlling the United States government. We're going to find out all the answers, if that's true or not, on the other side of the break. Stay tuned for Demand the Truth here on 990WBOB.com. Please share. Guys, thank you very much for watching and sharing this video. I definitely appreciate you guys sharing this video. This is, uh, I work a full-time job. I pay for this radio show. My, my, my entire inspiration here is trying to get the truth, find out the truth, and uh, try to expose injustice and help people who have been the subject of injustice. So uh, I definitely, definitely really, really appreciate this. This is something that I find interesting. Um, I don't have... Uh, 
I don't have all the answers about Freemasonry. That's why we're having somebody on. I'm not a Freemason, and um, at this point, I'm I'm not becoming a Freemason. Uh, but there's a lot of people that talk about Freemasonry and, and the occult and the hidden. And uh, I did a video. You guys can look it up on my YouTube, on my YouTube, and also uh, YouTube forward slash Demand the Truth, and also my Facebook Live videos. I've done two separate videos about the Albert Pike statue in Washington D.C. Albert Pike was not only the the author of the different degrees of Freemasonry, but he was rumored to have been involved in the creation of the KKK. And he was also a Confederate general. And there's a statue of him north of the Mason-Dixon line, in the north to a confederate general. People always talk about taking the statues down. And uh, my, I was saying, well, everyone's talking about these statues down, so uh, what about this? How come nobody wants to take this statue down? And um, so it's interesting. Uh, nobody wanted to take that down. I met John from that, and he was a member of not only the Alabama Libertarian Party, but also Freemasonry. So uh, in a 32nd degree at that, and said I had some things wrong about Freemasonry. So uh, I had him on the show. We're going to talk to him now. And um, like uh, Brian over here says, if you guys are reading the comments, I can't keep up with them all because I'm trying to do the show and, and check them out simultaneously. But get in contact uh, with Brian because uh, he's somebody that needs all of our help right now. And that's one of the solutions is helping each other. But to answer your question, Brian, the uh, the, the Illuminati was created separately. And, Al and George Washington himself, and his entered into the Library of Congress, wrote to an individual talking about uh, the influence of of the Illuminati in the 1700s infiltrating the Masonic lodges, and he said, doubt it not, none are, aware, none are more aware of their presence than I. So the Illuminati was a real organization which really existed, and they did try to infiltrate the Freemasons. How far that got, I don't know, but we're going to get back to the guests and find out. Thanks. All right, we are back here live on a worldwide broadcast. We have people from Africa to Vietnam to Pakistan to South America to Europe, all over the United States and Canada, uh, checking us out and listening to the show. We've got new lo uh, listeners and viewers all the time, and I'd like to thank them. The general idea of the show here is to give you an alternative source of information that is factual and non-debatable and to expose injustice that's occurring and, and take action against it peacefully. And we also want to demand the truth. We want to know what's going on in the world. And a, a group that continually comes up again and again in, in this uh, stream of research is are the Freemasons. So we have John Page on the line with us. He's a 32nd degree Freemason. And I got a lot of interesting questions from my own mind, but as well as people on social media. And if you guys are watching the Facebook live stream, please go to 990wbob.com and support the radio station and listen to the audio there. We were talking about a lot of things. But uh, now, Freemasons often get accused of worshiping the sun. What, what's the, uh, the symbolism of the sun represented? Do you guys worship the sun, Mr. Page? Uh, uh, no, no, we don't worship the sun. The, the sun is depicted as the master of the lodge. Um, the sun rises in the east. We all face the east. I mean, the sun is the sun. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like we worship it or anything. You know, it's, not, it's no more than what a Christian would worship the sun. It's just a symbol. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, now, obviously, I... Everything you see is a symbol. Yeah, and that's one something that I've I've found uh, prevalent in Masonry, but not just Masonry. I mean, and, and all over in every organization that has existed since the beginning of humanity, symbols represent things. What are the importance of symbols to Freemasonry? Freemasonry symbols are are built into every building that you see. Like, I, we, I can just drive down a road and just see masonry everywhere in pretty much every building I look at, whether it's the columns in front of somebody's house or their archways in their doors or figurines that they have outside of their house that they have no idea why they're popular, but they were popular because masons made them popular. Interesting. Anything from a pine, anything from a pine cone to a beehive, hmm. um, a pineapple, they're all Masonic can, symbols. Can you now? This is something that I talk about uh, a little bit too, because um, 
I, I'm, I live here in Providence, Rhode Island, and there's a section of Providence, Rhode Island called Federal Hill. Federal Hill is an Italian-American enclave here in Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, actually, one of the families here, one of the mob families, not only ran the Rhode Island families, but not only them, but the Boston families in certain parts of the New York family. And above that street is a giant pineapple. And then also, uh, there's a, a hotel that I'm aware of called the Pineapple Inn. Um, so I been taught that the pineapple was a symbol of welcome. Uh, what what is the Masonic symbol of pineapple represent? Welcome. <laughs> okay, 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 cool. So that makes sense. Yeah. All right. So now let's yeah. talk about. Uh, go a ahead. A lot of things, like a lot of things, are kind of explanatory. Like um, the the columns in front of a federal building, they're uh, um, the Corinthian and Corinthian columns are for uh, knowledge. The columns in front of a police station, they're um, Doric, that's for strength. You now, know, I was... Just, it's I, everywhere. You just don't even realize it because it, it's... Now, it's, I was told those columns represent uh, Joe Quinn and Boaz. Is that true? Oh. Um, yeah, uh, those, the two columns that come in, that are coming into the lodge, yes, that's true. Okay, now those are separate than the columns we see adorning other pieces of architecture? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just those two columns that are that are named. Not, I mean, that are named that. You know, any other column would just be named whatever. You know, going back into architecture. And uh, do you know what the names of the lions are in front of the New York Library? I do not. And I'd also like you to tell me that. But also, I I, I, I wonder. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'd like to know that. But I'd also like to know if there's any significance to the male and female sphinx outside of the uh, the Mother Lodge in D.C. Is there any connection there? But also tell me the answer to the question you just proposed, please. Oh, oh you already know the answer. No, I honestly don't. Uh, yeah, you do. The okay. names of the columns. Okay, Boaz. so the Joe Quinn and Boaz. Okay, so what, what are Joe yeah. Quinn and Boaz, and, and what is that? Because I honestly don't know that well, and I'm sure there's a, uh, there's a percentage of my audience that also doesn't. There are... Uh... They were two of the uh, early builders and, and founders of the lodge. Okay, so that makes sense. That's why they'd be represented there. Now, what can you tell me about the William Morgan incident? As I alluded to at the beginning of the show, William Morgan was an individual that himself was a Freemason, um, and apparently, according to history, he uh, read some of the things that Freemason was writing, didn't like it, uh, either wrote a book or proposed to write a book about that, and was supposedly murdered by Masons, which led to the first third party in 1826 here in the United States, the Anti-Masonic Party. What's your take on that whole scenario? I mean, there was a lot of shady deals done back in that day, and, and I mean, that's, that's nothing like the Lodge is today. Today, the Lodge is nothing but, a, well, in my area, a bunch of old farmers. Um, there's not even any politicians in my lodge. There's no business owners. It's just a bunch of farmers. Um, and as far as lodges around, I mean, none of that's taught. None of it's ever talked about. Um, the only reason I know about it is because I found out about it on the History Channel. And uh, I mean, it's and if you look at the History that, Channel, their logo is uh, two columns. And if you watch, if you watch almost any production on the History Channel, you'll see it's brought to you by 33 Studios at the end, and there's also uh, a pyramid there uh, embedded in the logo as well. So I, I'd be willing, and I'm not a Freemason, but I'd be willing to bet that the people behind the History Channel are Freemasons, or at least some uh, of them. I don't know if they. I don't know if they Did are. Did you notice that same symbolism? I have noticed that same symbolism. I have, ah, um, see. It wasn't just me, a non-Mason Goyim. Okay, yeah, look at me. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah. an idiot. Yes, I am. I, I'm still an idiot. But um, now, what's your take? No, yeah, okay, cool. So uh, now, I believe... I, I know they, Go ahead. I know they throw a lot of disinformation out there. A lot of dif disinformation. Um, like what? Tell me about that. The last, the last one of the history station ones, and they were, they were going through the different rituals, and they had all kinds of little things wrong inside the rituals. Yeah, because I've actually watched a few of those programs myself. Now, uh, we're coming up to another break. After this break right here, we're going to go to our longest segment. Um, and then okay. we'll, have a quick, uh, we'll have a quick segment after that. 
Um, is there anything that you would like to plug, any uh, book or website or, you know, any way to people get in contact with you, anything at all you'd like to plug here when, in this uh, about minute we have left before break? Uh, right in Ron Paul in the state of Alabama. Well, that, that's, that's something I can uh, definitely uh, agree on. Uh, you know, you despite what anybody says about Masons, if you agree with me on Ron Paul, that's awesome. We're going to go to break. We're here on Demand the Truth 990 WBOB.com. This is Renegade Radio. Follow me on Twitter at Will underscore Turbit, T U R B I T T, YouTube forward slash Demand the Truth. Uh, and we've got a lot of interesting things coming up this week, so stay tuned. I'm going to be going live again tomorrow uh, with an interview. So stay tuned, everybody. We're going to be right back. Talk more about masonry and devil worship on the other side of this break. 990WBOB.com. Demand the truth. With PhotoJet's graphic design tool, whenever you feel inspired, <coughs> you can always create awesome designs. You guys, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate posters, you guys listening uh, to 990WBOB.com. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you guys sharing this video um, and commenting all the comments on this. I unfortunately won't be able to go through all the comments until I get back home later. But uh, I guarantee I will read every single one of the comments. And I want to give a shout out to a lot of people that help me out all the time. And um, people like uh, Jim Boxel, Selman Gore, Brian, um, uh, you know, everybody. Uh, somebody named Lisa, who I won't get into the last name, but uh, Vicar, Susan, uh, Dale. I mean, there's so many people, and I won't be able to, to name them all, unfortunately, because I'm in contact with Sean Ferreira. Uh, Nick Gallucci, uh, so many people um, that I've been in contact with on a daily basis. David Texiera, David is a man, he's always helping and sharing my videos. I mean, there's so many people that I'm in contact with on a daily basis. Deborah Jennings, um, pardon me. There are so many people that send me information and send me links. And like, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, it's funny because I barely have any friends in real life, but all my friends are, are here on the interwebs, on on Twitter, on uh, on Facebook, on on the deep web. That's where I met my girlfriend. I ordered her on the deep web. She was 75% off. Just kidding. But uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I can't. I honestly can't even name all the people. Uh, that are so helpful to me. Um, it's, it's very, very, very much appreciated. Uh, Josh LaVarge, everybody out there that, that helps and shares the videos because I'm not doing this because I want to do this. I mean, I do want to do this, trust me. Um, but I don't want to have to do this. I want to have to do something else. I want to have to go play basketball. I want to have to go watch a movie. I want to have to go do something else or play a video game or, or watch some comedy besides doing this, having to expose children getting trafficking, illegal wars, long term constitutional wars, evil people meeting in sacred like the Bilderberg Group, the illegal and unconstitutional Federal Reserve. Um, so I just appreciate everybody and appreciate all the well wishes when I was uh, out there on Saturday in Boston with Antifa um, and they assaulted me through my phone, spit on me, and uh, <laughs> that was ridiculous. Check out that live video. Um, it's just crazy stuff, you know, and um, I mean, literally, it's the point where I have like, you know, 4,700 Facebook friends. I don't have that much of a uh, of a group of people that I'm linked to uh, comparatively on Twitter or Instagram, but I really, really try to uh, to get in contact, read everything you guys send me, see all the links. Big shout out to Sean P. Murphy, who was up there with me, um, and so much. I appreciate you guys. So uh, stay tuned. All right, we are back here live on demand. The truth. Thank you so much to everybody listening and sharing 990wbob.com. The live link there. If, like I said, if you're watching on Facebook, go to that, share that, share this link. Thank you so much for everyone out there that continually sends me information and supports me. I may not be able to, 
to like every one of your statuses or retweet everything that you guys do, but I try, I definitely read all the comments. I definitely go through everything that's inboxed to me and uh, I read it. And if I can't read it that second, I'll wait till I get out of work or do something because I'm just a regular dude that's, uh, that's on the quest for the truth here and wants to do something about it peacefully. Um, and so in the quest for the truth, we have John Page, who's a 32nd degree Freemason. And uh, there's different degrees in Freemasonry. And I believe the highest admitted is the 33rd degree, which is an honorary degree. So he's the highest you can possibly be, uh, except for a 33rd that I'm aware of. And then there's people that speculate he goes farther than that. But most of those people themselves are non-Masons. So we're on the line. We got John Page, 32nd degree Freemason here. And now something I have to address here is something that the Masons are constantly accused of, which is uh, devil worship. Now, Albert Pike, who was uh, a Confederate general and was somebody responsible for writing the different degrees of Scottish Rite Freemasonry, in his book talks about Lucifer as being the light bearer and all this other stuff. What is Satan? What is Lucifer? Are they the same? Are they different? And do Masons worship the devil? Uh, Masons, oh, sorry, uh, Masons do not worship the devil. Uh, Albert Pike put a lot of things in that in that book. He it, it, he went all the way from numerology, um, planets align planet alignments. Uh, he he tried to put I think a little bit of every single religion into this to come up with something that was too much for any one person to bear, and he should have never bared it. He should have never been doing all that opium while he was writing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, he he was he was out there. Um, I, we do study his book and we do work through his book, but we don't. We skip over the satanic stuff in there. Okay, now do um, you believe? Lucifer. Now do you believe that it actually is satanic? Because I've heard other people say that Lucifer actually wasn't Satan. And another interesting point that I bring up to Christians all the time, there are two people in the Bible that are referred to as a light bearer. One is the devil, the other is Jesus Christ. So Lucifer, I've heard, is the devil. I've also heard that it's separate than Satan. And I've also heard it's just the light bearer, which is knowledge. So what is the devil? What is Satan? What is Lucifer? And are they all the same? Are they all different? And did, did Pike worship them? Pike didn't worship him, as far as I know. He, he was a good Christian man. Um, I, I I am atheist, and right now I might be getting brought up on charges and stuff, and be getting kicked out because of my atheism. You know, I told him I did believe in a higher power. I just didn't tell him a higher power was science. Um, well, let me ask you a question. Let's let, we'll, we'll come back to that right now too, because I myself consider myself a skeptic. Now, I, go, mm -hmm. I only go with anything that I can absolutely prove, hands down. Everything else I keep a skeptical, open mind towards. Now, I am at this moment not necessarily, let's say, uh, a Christian. But I keep, it, I keep an open mind to the fact that Christianity may be true if further evidence presents itself. Now, you said you're a man of science, and I'm just going to give you a little pushback on your atheism here. Well, okay. if you're a man of science... Uh, I don't, again, I'm, not, I, I'm definitely not uh, an adherent to any particular religious or political ideology. But if everything started um, from Big Bang, first of all, who or what banged that Big Bang? And DNA is a code. So, I mean, who wrote that code? Why, why would you be an atheist? If you, I, I mean, I don't necessarily believe in the prescribed traditional religions, but I do think that uh, to create a, a chicken, someone has to lay that egg. Yeah, I don't believe in a Big Bang. Um, I think the science on, on that is still out. I don't think they've been able to look far enough on there. Oh, it's definitely not proven. It's definitely just a, it's definitely just a theory. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's just still a theory. Yeah. No, it's it's still a theory. It's definitely not definitely proven for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So where do you think we came from? I mean, who, deal is who would started the Big Bang? Is who who would have created God? Good question, and that goes into the unending question where we're not able to answer that. So I, I was just feeling right. philosophical. So let's get back, but let's get back into uh, the devil worship, though. Let's talk about um, let's talk about our Lucifer, Satan, and the devil one and the same. And uh, what was Pike talking about when he wrote about those things? Um, like I said, 
that that part is not taught in a southern lodge at all with over a period. It might be taught in northern lodges because there is a different northern and a, and a um, southern jurisdictions. You can tell by the way that the eagle swings are on the on the badges. The southern is down. The northern is up. And that's, yes, that that's might true. be taught in the Northern Lodge, but, but the Valley of Dothan, is, that's nowhere near in anybody's vocabulary here. Okay. So uh, I, I uh, wanted to also ask you, I went to the, uh, the lodge there in D.C. where Albert Pike is entombed, and uh, under mm -hmm. that it says, uh, Order Out of Chaos, Aboad Chaos. Now, some people say that the Masons are here to bring order out of chaos and create chaos, and in order to bring order. And other people say that uh, masonry is to tame the chaos in your body and create order out of that and make you a better man. What's your take on either of those descriptions? Uh, well, you start with a rough ashlar, and then you end I'm up sorry, you start with the what? A rough ashlar. A rough ashlar is just a rock that is in the shape of something, and then you smooth down the sides. You... you take the chaos and you create order. You shape the size and you make everything nice and level and plumb. And okay, true. now and do you think you that would be consistent together. with the alchemical ideas of turning lead into gold in one soul? Uh, sure. Okay. I haven't heard of all that. Well, yeah, some like people, that, yeah, yeah, so that, some that people, sounds pretty good. Yeah. yeah, some people believe that the ancient alchemists were not really trying to turn physical lead into physical gold, rather that they were philosophical and they were trying to turn their base lead, their animalistic nature into uh, uh, spiritual gold, which would make them adepts and also, you know, basically enlightened. So that's the, the comparison I was trying to draw there. Well, well the Masons claim that Socrates, um, Gallo, uh, uh, Socrates, um, all the philosophers, all the Greek philosophers, the Thagorium, yeah, now, um, we, we claim all those people as, as our kids. Yeah, so now this is something that I talk to people about a lot. Uh, the people Pythagoras and, and Socrates or Socrates, as he's referred to in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, these were people yeah. that were part of mystery religions. And I believe that mystery religions were the precursors to what we know today as secret societies. Is that true? And also, where do Rosicrucians uh, fall into this whole mess? Uh, it's my understanding that a Rosicrucian is uh, somebody that comes off the cup line. But a uh, Rosicrucian... Nowadays, it comes off the what line? Not that. Uh, it originally came from somebody that was uh, descended from the uh, from the cup or the chalice, right? The Rosicrucians. Okay, okay. I started. actually did not. I didn't. I hadn't heard that. So that's very interesting. Okay. Um, but now, I mean, a Rosicrucian is is it has I they started as a branch off masonry, but I mean, there's there's no link to being a Rosicrucian through Masonry? Yes, no, I know you guys are I know you guys are yeah. separate there. Now I wanted to ask you another thing here. Now people always talk about that Freemasons take a higher oath. Uh, they take a higher oath that the Mason the oath that they take to Freemasonry is higher than the oath that they would take to uh, let's say the army or the United States Constitution or something to that effect. Is that true? Because I've heard people like Jordan Maxwell say for years and years and years, what makes you think for one moment you need to wake up and do your homework? These people, the Masons, they're the judges and they're the lawyers and they're all on the same team and they take a higher oath to that so they couldn't give a, a damn about you. Is that, what's your take on that? And by the way, I, before you answer that, I want to say thank you very much, John Page, for being a good sport to come on the show, uh, firstly. And secondly, I'll, I'll get to some better questions, but I mean, these are questions that continually come up about Masons, and I wanted to give you the opportunity to either confirm or dispel them. But uh, yeah, what, mm -hmm. what's your take on uh, Masons having a higher oath to that rather than the ordinary person of the Constitution, perhaps? It's, uh, it's according to the person. I mean, one person might not be that big of a mason and one person might be. I mean, there, there are a lot of masons out there that are just card holders. They're, they went through their three degrees, and in Alabama you only have to go through the first two degrees to be a mason. You don't have to actually take the test for the third. So um, 
they just get that little card and then they walk around claiming they're a Mason while they don't actually do anything or know anything. And those people probably don't won't hold a oath higher for somebody. You know, that, that if makes they see sense somebody, for sure. Yeah. Um, out on the side of the road that's a Mason, they probably wouldn't stop. I would stop. Um, now, I've heard this as far also. As, uh, Army goes, I mean, it would just be according to the person. I know I've heard reports of, um, like, Hitler's favorite flower was the forget me not. Yes, now, so, yeah, I've the, heard that. And, I've heard that in, in uh, during World War II and also in court cases. If you were to give a simple symbol or a hand gesture, a signal to somebody, that uh, that would show that you're a Mason and, and you would be absolved from either violence or a crime. What's, is that true? Um, I got a, I got out of a ticket one time, one time. Okay, wait, hold on, because I'm not a Mason. Can I throw up a hand signal, uh, to a cop and do that? Because last time I threw up a hand signal to a cop, it was a crip and, uh, he, he did not like that. So what, what can I do to get out of a ticket? <laughs> there, there isn't a hand signal there. I mean, I, the police, the, the chief of police of the town was a brother at the lodge. Oh, wow, okay. So you didn't have to throw up a hand signal. Uh, All right, cool. So uh, now, well, something that I was talking about before the show here is that, like I said earlier in the show also, I traveled to the, I'm not even exactly sure what the technical name for it is, but it's the Supreme Mother Lodge there in D.C. of the Scottish Rite, I believe. And uh, mm -hmm. I went there, I saw, and they have a small museum there, talks about very famous actors and politicians all being members and, you know, famous historical memorabilia and memorabilia otherwise. One of the things they talk about is there's two flags there, the United States flag, and then there's also a Supreme Council flag. And they were like, oh, that was the first flag to fly on the moon. I was like, which one, the United States? And they were like, no, actually, the Masonic flag. Uh, is that true? What are your thoughts on the moon landing? And uh, I've also heard that, the, Mace, uh, that the, the majority of astronauts were also Masons. Um, I know the majority of astronauts graduated from Auburn University, so does that mean Auburn University is in charge of the moon program or something? I Absolutely mean... true. It's conclusive. It's conclusive. Harvard University <laughs> faked the moon landings. You heard it here first. 32nd degree Mason. Just kidding. Uh, but no, no, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's true. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to, uh, like I said earlier, dispel or confirm some of these, some of these myths. And like I said... Uh, at the beginning of the show, I don't think necessarily that masonry is anything nefarious because masonry, just like anything else, because the Illuminati, which, like I said, the Bavarian Illuminati, which was an actual historical organization, and we know they existed factually, and we also understand that there was a courier which was traveling with documents of the Illuminati uh, on horseback, was struck by lightning. George Washington also talks about this. And they also talk about that the fact that they were infiltrating Masonic lodges, but not only Masonic lodges, but religious and other political and non-political uh, groups. And so, obviously, the Illuminati uh, wanted to infiltrate things. So you can't necessarily say that the Masons are bad at all. So I, my, I'm just here, and I, again, I want to thank you, John, for, for being very transparent and answering these questions, because I know that there's a lot of people out there um, that would maybe skirt around them or not answer those questions. So just coming on the show is awesome. Unfortunately, the majority of my questions here have been, uh, you know, what, what is this, what is that? And like I said, I don't necessarily think just because Albert Pike wrote that Lucifer is a light bearer that he worships Satan, because it doesn't say that he worships Satan, and I'm not even sure what the hell Lucifer is. So we'll figure that out. We're going up to our final break here. we got a last segment. i got about 34 more questions to ask this guy, and unfortunately I have one more segment. So hopefully he'll come back for a Facebook Live or a Part 2 on this. Again, it's Will Turbit, Demand the Truth, at Will underscore T-U-R-B-I-T-T -T on Twitter, YouTube forward slash Demand the Truth, Instagram Demand the Truth, and we are here live with John Page, 32nd degree Freemason out of Alabama. And he's also a libertarian who's for Ron Paul, so we can agree on that and a number of other things. We'll be back. Final segment, Demand the Truth. Stay tuned.
everyone can become a professional designer with PhotoJet's graphic design tool. Whenever you feel inspired, you can always create awesome designs with massive templates from posters, flyers, cards, and invitations. PhotoJet meets all your needs to create graphic designs, make collages, and edit photos. Again, thank you guys so much for sharing and commenting on this video. Uh, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. This is very interesting information. I'm learning a lot here. Um, and I learned, like I said before, in, during the last break, uh, I learn a lot so much every day from you guys. The stuff that uh, you guys inbox me and share with me is very, very cool stuff. I might not be able to see it that second. Like I said, I work. I work full time. I got a family. I got a friends. I got a life. I'm not many. Most of you guys are my only friends here on the internet. But uh, I do have a life. I do have a job, and I do this all in my free time. So uh, hopefully, I can get to the point where this is my job. You know, where I can be on the radio and doing research and, and writing articles and making documentaries full time. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not there yet. So uh, I'm just trying my hardest in my spare time, and I can't tell you how humbled I am by you guys helping me out. You know, it's I wouldn't be reaching the people that I'm reaching if it wasn't for you guys sharing the videos and sending me information that I had no idea about. So uh, this is a grassroots grassroots movement, and it's it's all of us. I'm not. I'm not. I never claim to be to be smart. I never claim to be good or anything or knowledgeable or anything. I'm just somebody that's pissed off about injustices. And then on top of that, not only the injustices that occur, but then people are trying to bully us. And I don't care. I'm. I will not let people just bully the crap out of me and laugh in my face. So I want all of us to come together in a peaceful way and change this. And that's what Demand the Truth is about. So I really, really appreciate you guys sharing and spreading this video everywhere. Um, very important, man. I appreciate it. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your basement. There's a pair of overalls that overall you're not so into anymore. A perfectly good laptop that hasn't sat in your lap in months. And even more stuff, like still no jobs? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait. No longer needed, I think, right? Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed, and they're the stuff inside your stuff. Even inside that winter coat that moved with you to Phoenix. Our job is to unlock those jobs, and it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide... How much time do I have after we come back from break, roughly? So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help Eight create minutes. jobs. Okay. And isn't that worth partying with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at goodwill.org. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. 990 WBOB. All right, we are back. Final segment, Renegade Radio, 990WBOB.com. I am your host, Will Turbitt, on Twitter, at Will underscore T-U-R-B-I-T-T, -T, YouTube forward slash Demand the Truth, Instagram Demand the Truth. Please check me out there. I have all the past episodes, me um, going up on to people inside, outside of Comic Ping Pong Pizza. I have them on video. Hailing Satan, I have uh, John Cariaco, one of the initial whistleblowers from the CIA. I have Fritz Springmeier, Daryl Hamamoto, uh, PhDs there, so check that all out. Uh, me yelling at cops outside of the Bilderberg group and telling them that their, their power is being abused. But right now, we have John Page, 32nd degree Freemason, also a member of the Alabama Libertarian Party. We've got the final segment coming up here. Now, I wanted to talk about um, race. Now, people, t uh, as far as I know, that there's, in the mainstream of Freemasonry, there's the York right, the Scottish right, and then there's the Prince Hall right. Now, to my understanding, the Prince Hall right are the black Masons, and they're not allowed to, uh, to travel and, and uh, enjoy the same luxuries as typical Masons. Is this true? Is segregation still existing within ma Masonry at this time? Uh, yes, there is plenty of segregation. Uh, an Alabama Mason cannot go over into England and practice Masonry with the English. Um, uh, the English don't even recognize, or nobody in Europe recognizes the Scottish Rite completely because it's something made up by a loony old wacko. <laughs> um, 
York Wright's the only one that they recognize. They don't recognize the Shriners over there either. Um, and and nobody ever seems to have a problem with the Shriners, do they? No, I mean, they're just so so cool. There's like 19 of them in a tiny car. I mean, how could you not like those dudes? Yeah, I mean, each one of those persons are a Mason. I mean, so how, if you don't have a problem with that Shriner, then you shouldn't have a problem with that Mason. Now, is it anyway. true? Is it true to to be a, a Shriner that you have to agree? Do you have to uh, achieve some degree of success with the masonry? Uh, no, you just have to have all the money that it takes to be a Shriner. Oh, okay, so uh, that's gonna rule me out. Now, I, I hear you know I, I know you are pretty well aware of this. There's all sorts of videos on YouTube. Oh, Keisha Cole confirmed Illuminati hand sign, and Clay Aiken guaranteed a Illuminati Mason confirmed. And uh, what what can you tell me about the the hand signals that you see? How many of them are Masons? How many of them are accidental? Are they even Masonic symbols? And what the hell is up with all these people and George Bush Illuminati, Bill Clinton Freemason confirmed? What 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 the hell is with all this? Um, I've never seen any of those people in a lodge at all. So I mean, you haven't seen Keisha, know, you haven't seen as... Keisha Cole in an Alabama Freemasonic lodge out in the farmland. No, sir, highly no, improbable. No. All right, well, I'll um, let you go on that one. Um, they are. Uh, if anything that they're doing, I mean, anybody can look up the handshake online. It's not. It's not that big of a secret. The handshake is so simple anyway. I mean. What the, okay, so let's, let, let, let's, let's, let's talk about this, okay? Uh, so the, the Freemasonic handshake, what is it and, and how is it done? Is it just basically that you're like, you're touching the, uh, the fingers instead of the palm? How does that work? Because people are like, oh, that's a Freemason handshake. That's Freemason. Uh, like, I don't know exactly what it is because I don't just believe people that necessarily have a YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, you just, it's, it's your thumb placement on the back of a hand, and as, the higher you are is whichever place you put your thumb on that, on that hand. Now, let me ask you a question. If I was just to, to fake that handshake with the mason, how, would they ask me some questions afterwards, or would they just believe that I'm a free mason? Yeah, there's a series of questions afterwards. Um, but uh, most of the time, you just have somebody that's a mason vouch for you. But hey, it, you know, if you want to be a Mason, all you have to do is ask one to be one. We cannot, we are not allowed by law to ask you if you want to be a Mason. You have to come to us and ask us. Right now, they're letting anybody in because we're dying. That's true. I heard uh, Richard Simmons was allowed to join the lodge, which is very strange. I didn't know where that came from. Uh, in all seriousness, though, I'm going to ask so one more. He might be a member. <laughs> he may be. You, honestly, you seriously never know. Some people that you would never think, uh, like I said, when I went to that museum, I was very surprised at certain members. And uh, you, you can never look at somebody and be like, oh, he, he's a Mason or he's not a Mason for sure. Um, now, one last question I wanted to ask you is, you know, even the History Channel has documentaries talking about the Masons created the United States. Um, the, the Masons have controlled every president since then and still con continue, continue to control the United States. Is that true? Yes or no? What's your take on the Masons and the creation and the continuing control of the United States? Is that true or not? Uh, the Boston Tea Party was completely 100% Masons. Uh, Patrick Henry's speech was made in a Mason's Lodge. Um, everything, yes, went straight to the Masons for the Revolutionary War and for a little time after that. But after, after a short period of time, the Masons died out in politics and other groups took over. That's true. More secretive groups. So now uh, let me let me finish this off. Let's let's talk about you as a libertarian, how you became a libertarian, and uh, ways that you can help the Libertarian Party there in um, in Alabama. And also, a quick question: Is Ron Paul, in your opinion, a Mason? Uh, I don't know if Ron Paul is or not. I, I don't have a clue. I've, I've I've never heard anything about that. Um, but for the Libertarian Party, there is a candidate running for a write-in, and his name is Ron Bishop. He's an IT guy out of Birmingham, and he works for a wine company. And now, He's is he running guy. against the Ron Moore there? 
Uh, Roy Moore, pardon me? Yeah, he's uh, running against Roy Moore. He's running a write-in campaign. He's no money for advertising, very few little yard signs. Okay, and, so uh, what's his name again, please? What's that? What's his name again, please? Ron Bishop. Ron Bishop. So if you guys uh, want a libertarian, and people always complain all the time, oh, libertarian, they're not going to win, they're not going to win. Well, guess what? If you vote for them, it's going to make a build bigger platform, which is going to get more people to hear their ideas, which is going to turn more people to libertarians. And if we get enough people voting libertarian eventually, then they'll be on the debates with the mainstream people and say what you want about a libertarian, but they will utterly destroy a Democrat or Republican on the debate stage. Correct, sir. Correct. All right. So, uh, Ron, Ron Bishop. Uh, so, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell people to Google Ron Bishop. Uh, trust but verify. Check him out as a libertarian. I'm sure he's a better, a better candidate than either Doug Jones or potentially Roy Moore, Moore because Roy Moore is a Republican and he is definitely not a libertarian. So, uh, we're coming up on the show again. John Page, thank you very much. Third, thirty-second degree Freemason joining us here live on demand. The truth, and thank you so much for answering those questions and talking about the myths and truths of Freemasonry. And like he said, if you want to be one, ask one. So uh, if that's something you're interested, check him out. Otherwise, stay tuned for us here. Demand the truth. We're here live Mondays at seven p.m. I'm going to be live doing an interview tomorrow night at seven p.m. So check me out on Facebook Live, YouTube forward slash Demand the Truth, Instagram Demand the Truth. Twitter at will underscore T-U-R-B-I-T-T, -T, Renegade Radio, 990-W-B-O-B.com. Demand the truth. See you next Monday, Mother Hubbards. <laughs> <laughs>